And so, David, what are some of the lessons or takeaways from the winter mission? If you could share some of that with our audience. Yeah, so I'll definitely let you know Jake and, and, and Courtney share you know some of the examples from Eau Claire. So I'll, I'll maybe speak a bit more to Buffalo and Leadville. Okay. Um, and you know, definitely one of the big takeaways is that you know community engagement is a lot more fun when we do it outdoors, okay. and that engagement in winter can absolutely take place outside. Uh, this is an image from Buffalo where we kicked off all of the engagement events with a neighborhood party in Martin Luther King Park. There was a DJ, there was free hot chocolate, there was s'mores and portable fire pits. The mayor came out, took some selfies, started hearing from residents about the barriers they encounter in winter. Um, you know, there are also some, we did some similar sort of events in Leadville, you can see here. And, you know, part of what Winter Mission was trying to do was to, to your point, change people's mindsets and perceptions okay. about winter. And what these engagement events demonstrate is that with very little capital investment, there's a real clear appetite for winter programming in neighborhood parks, and that it doesn't really cost much to plug an iPhone into some portable speakers okay. to create that fun atmosphere. You know, marshmallows and hot chocolate are not expensive. Um, mm -hmm. You know, sugar is a very uh, affordable, <laughs> but very yeah. super effective way to it get people engaged masses. in these conversations. Yeah. Yes, sugar <laughs> brings the masses. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, you know, another takeaway we got from this project is that, you know, again, small investments can make a mm -hmm. big difference. One of Buffalo's pilot projects was a series of small micro grants of up to $1,000 for local communities to help with sidewalk snow clearance or running neighborhood winter walking groups. You know, that's really mm -hmm. small dollar amounts that can have big impacts on the day-to-day -day quality of life for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And the last highlight, uh, you know, I'll quickly just mention is just the importance of needing to apply the winter mission lens elsewhere. Mm -hmm. You know, there, there are major racial and economic, economic barriers in place of all of our cities that winter only exacerbates. And engaging communities throughout this process, issues outside the strict scope of winter mission, of winter cities kept coming up. Um, an example of that from Buffalo is that we heard some community members uh, that it was really hard for them to consider going outside in winter um, when their own homes weren't adequately protected from the cold. Mm -hmm. Now, Winter Mission wasn't technically supposed to be looking at private indoor spaces, but we, we couldn't really ignore this really important problem. So Buffalo took that feedback and partnered with Senior Services and National Fuel to provide 200 Winter Mission weatherization kits in HUD-eligible neighborhoods. And then while the kits were being handed out, the city took the opportunity to offer socialization supports, health checks, clean energy audits, and other winter resources. Um, a similar sort of example from Leadville was the last thing was just, you know, we heard from members of the Latinx community uh, that there were major barriers preventing them from engaging in physical activity outdoors in winter uh, was fear of police harassment. Um, that feedback has led Leadville to start sort of rethinking their approaches to policing public spaces and consider sanctuary city policies. It's, again, definitely not something that winter mission technically focused on. It's maybe not the thing that you really think of when you think about winter cities. But, you know, if we're serious about wanting to create equitable winter cities, we, we can't shy away from these major systemic issues.